Hello, I'm Ilian, and in this technical video, we're going to take a look at Mesh Central's inter user messaging. So, a lot of people are building things around Mesh Central, customizing it, or building applications that make use of Mesh Central's. Uh, remote management and remote monitoring, but they want to add a lot of other things to it. And so there's different ways they can do that. Some of my friends uh, did that in a specific way, and I suggested an alternative. And so we're going to cover that today. So uh, there's a lot of automation that can be done in Mesh Central using this tool, this command line tool called meshcontrol.js. Now that comes with Mesh Central, it's a command line tool, and you can create accounts, upload, download files to remote computers and things like that. And so that's super useful. And so uh, some of my friends have taken that and modified it to build different applications that perform different tasks on Mesh Central. And if you, um, if you know how to work with the configuration file of Mesh Central quite a bit, you can also customize the user interface. You can know when users come in and out. And you can receive these events. These applications can, can log in, connect WebSocket, receive these events, and, um, and perform actions. So that's really nice. And if you're a developer, uh, there's a lot of things you could do here. Now, what if you have user apps that log in and they need to uh, talk to other modules that you've built? Um, so one of the ideas that they had is that they would have this separate server that would, com that would um, take basically calls from their application. And then they the server would also call Mesh Central and do things. Now, the problem with this separate connection is now, now you have to connect to both Mesh Central and this other server. You have to authenticate twice. You have to secure two connections, and so on. So the idea is, if Mesh Central could pass messages within, um, you know, basically communicate messages between these two applications or, or more, then developers have this extra flexibility when they build apps against Mesh Central. And so that's what the inter-user messaging is. What it does is it allows an app that connects and authenticates WebSocket to Mesh Central to send messages to other apps uh, or uh, that also connect using WebSockets. So we'll demo how this works. So first of all, I have my uh, trusty Mesh Central server right here. So I'm running it on port 443. Of course, I'm, uh, I'm logged in as administrator. Actually, what I'm going to do is not log me myself in as administrator. I'm just going to run it as Mesh Central like that. And then I'm going to hit refresh. So now I can log out, log back in. Um, and my server is here, and I can, of course, um, connect to various devices and so on. So this all works. Good. So now, what I'm going to do is open a, um, a another command prompt. And what I want to do, I'll put it right here, is that I want to, first of all, point out that if I say node mesh control, um, this is all the commands that mesh control supports. And the way Mesh Control works is that it connects using WebSocket to Mesh Central, and then it exchanges commands. Um, and that's all great. So for example, if I want to list uh, devices, I can say dash dash login user admin, login password. In this case, my password is also admin. And then uh, by default, the URI is the local server. So I, I'm not going to specify the URI here. And I'm going to say list devices. And you're going to see all the devices of my account right here, but in text format right there. So this is super useful. So uh, my friends had modified this app to do things, to, to perform lots of actions, but they needed to be able to send and receive messages between instances of the apps or different users. So what we have is a, a different piece of code called MeshBot. And it's called MeshBot because 
the it can act as a, a bot that just uh, connects to Mesh Central, waits for instruction, and performs uh, you know tasks for you. So what you can do is you can run MeshBot uh, as a as and logging it as a username and password, uh, and of course it can do ac actions just like Mesh Control can. But what we want to do is have the ability for bots to talk to each other. Or if you have a user who sends a message, then this bot would respond and do things. So what I want to do is uh, and log in a bot. Now, by the way, when you log in a bot, you could, and I actually recommend that you create a uh, login token. So for example, my bot, and you say unlimited, and it creates use, uh, a username and password, and this is what you would use to log in the bot. So the nice thing about that is um, the bot would not be able to change your username and password or any account information. And also you could uh, remove at any time the bot's access to your account. So if, if that's interesting. Now, I am going to not do that. I'm just going to log in the bot um, using login uh, user admin, login pass admin. And I'm going to say run. And so now, oops, and since I'm using a, um, an, you know, my own private certificate here, my own private uh, TLS cert, no cert check. There you go. Oh, and then run. No cert, no, no cert check. And then run. Let's see here. No search check. Okay, I'll just put the run right there. Uh, that works. Okay, perfect. So now I have this bot connected and it can perform actions. Now you need to be a developer because obviously you will customize this bot to do what you want. But now I want to be able to send, I'm a, I want to be a different user. I want to use a piece of code and send an instruction to this bot. And so how do I do that? So the first thing I'm going to do is you'll need version, Mesh Central version uh, 0924 as, as a minimum. And then I am going to take a look at the config file, my, uh, my config.json file for my server. And here there's something called inter-user messaging. And what you need to specify is one or more users that are allowed to receive and send messages to all the other users. So normally this feature is off and it can only be turned on if you put one or more usernames here. You can also put tr just true like that. In that case, all users get to send and receive messages to any other users, but otherwise, um, you just specify it like user and min right here, like that. And so now any user can send to user and min, and user and min can, uh, can send back to any users, but um, users can't talk to each other unless they're talking to admin. So that's how that works. So um, obviously once you change that configuration, you reset the server so it reads the new config. And now I won't need this. Now what I do is I go back to my bot here, and you'll notice, by the way, every time I, I stop the server or start it, the bot code will automatically uh, reconnect after 10 seconds. So this is great, so now the bot is running. Now what I'm gonna do is open a, another window, uh, like this, and I am going to say uh, run the bot, but this time, oops, Let's see, this time I am going to run it with just the account AA, which is like a dummy user account I have. And then I'm going to say target user admin. So this, what is the sample code will do is it will log in as, admin, as AA and it will send a message to the account admin. And so as soon as I do that, it will send the, the hello, uh, hello message. And so now the bot admin just received that hello message and it uh, replied with an echo and so this is the echo that the 
that the user originally the AA sent, uh, he got the echo back. So just to confirm that he got the message back. And uh, you'll notice that what happened is that because I specified a target user, as in min, then if, if this bot was logged in multiple times, then all the sessions for admin would get this message. And the scope of the message is, of course, user, because I specified a uh, target user uh, to, to send the message to. And of course, then uh, this code replied by, with a message, uh, hello, echo hello, back, but he replied with the, the bot replied with the session ID. So that's why the reply here has a session scope. Because now, even if I'm logged in multiple times as the user AA, um, I only the session that sent the message would get the answer back. So if that makes sense. Now, uh, now this, and you'll see the scope here. So this is uh, the basics of it. It basically allows you to send and receive messages all you want. Uh, another thing I can do in this test code is instead of target user, I'm going to say target session. And then I'm going to specify this session. And then this is going to send a hello message to the bot, but only on this session. So even if, if the bot is logged in multiple times on multiple sessions, then only this session will be targeted. I'll hit enter. And you'll see here I, I sent a hello. To, uh, and the session, the scope was session, so it was only for that specific bot. And then I um, I get a reply from the bot with that uh, with my you know echo. And of course, you'll see here that every time I hit Control C and reconnect, the user AA gets a different session ID because it's a different WebSocket. And so you see it here, the the AA has a different identifier than this A here. So basically that's it. It's just a kind of a way for Mesh Central to uh, send messages. The data field here can be anything you want. I just put a string, but you can put an object. You can put a lot of values in there, whatever you need to, to put. And so this allows you to basically create um, one or two applications like bots or stuff, connecting to Mesh Central, wait for these events, and then you can build an, a user app that logs in as that user, sends a message, and to that then goes to these bots, and these bots knows what to do. So that's roughly what's going on here. I'm sure this can be used for lots of different things, but you know uh, we'll see. So hopefully that was clear. Thank you very much. Have a great day.